Hello everybody, welcome to this guide and tutorial for the Golden Shot. Difficulty level is medium and I'm going to show you 6 shots in how to maximize the possibility for you to get a chest or maybe to depending on how many shots you're gonna take. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button. Also, if you do want to get more content for the Golden Shot or maybe for, you know, whatever tour play you're playing, whatever tour you're playing on, then you visit golfclashtommy.com. Last but not least, patreon.com slash golfclashtommy for personalized text guide for tournament or tour play and also training sessions. Let me know in the comments what you get got in your chest. Did you get the hole in one? That is something that I did as well. So let me know in the comments there as well. So everybody, we're gonna take a look first. What course? We're gonna play Santa Ventura, a course that we have been playing a couple of times before. I made some minor tweaks, especially to the landing position to make that more consistent because I noticed on the older golden shot, I I had, we had a tendency to whatever headwind we had, we went in between clubs. So now it's only with a five mile per hour straight head when we're gonna go a little bit into overpower and that's going to be a very unlucky wind. But that has been tweaked. So Onyx chest for the hole in one, Fire chest for the yellow ring, Scarlet chest for the red ring, Topaz chest for the light blue ring and Acer chest for the dark blue ring. We are, are going to get between 3 to 5 miles per hour as you can see on the top left and also press the question mark for more I would say frequently asked questions about the golden shot. If you do need help from the support, you press the uh, the button called contact support and then you write your ticket to Playdemic and Golf Clash team and they will help you out. So, adjustment. Golden long iron, max distance plus 20% over adjustment, which means that we need to add 1.5 per ring. 1.5 per ring is with the 20% included, so you don't have to add an additional 20% on the 1.5. To make it as simple as possible, we take a look at the top. There you see wind and then rings. So you just read off, read off what you got as wind. Let's say we have a four mile per hour wind. Then we take a look. Oh yes, then we do have 2.6 rings to adjust. That's the easiest way. Use that, it's going to help you bring more consistency with your adjustment because my adjustments are based on that table that we do have there on top. For those of you that do want to have a picture in front of you when you're playing, you can download this picture from golfclashtommy.com or you can also get it through the link that you can find in the video description down below. There you find, you know, the, the spin adjustment, you find the normal adjustment, you find the landing position, you also find the rings. So, landing position here, we are going to make it simple for ourselves. We are not going to add any spin as a start. We are letting the yellow ring rest on the fringe, bottom part of the yellow ring by the beginning of the fringe with the ball guideline to the hole. From there, we're going to tweak the spin adjustment based on obviously what type of wind we're going to have. So you're gonna see me mixture a little bit around with the spin that we're having, and then we're going to summarize, and I believe that the adjustment that we're going for in the end is going to be super solid. So we're gonna take a look at the video. We have six shots to go. I'm going to talk it over, but then be focused when we do summarize to get the correct spin adjustment. So shot number one, 4.1, headwind and crosswind. We're going to find the position here now, ball guideline to the hole with the yellow ring there at the bottom. Only using three bars backspin here. As to, you know, I didn't really know how how much will the headwind uh, affect us here when we only have a 4.1. Also moving my landing position a little bit further back, which is a slight mistake there. Adding a bar of side spin to the right as well to see, okay, do we now with the crosswind, do it push us too much or too little? 4.1 gives us 2.7 rings and we do adjust. It's coming in nicely, but here we can see directly that we're coming in a little bit too hot combined with a little bit too much to the right. But I would say we're coming in a little bit too hot. And, you know, as I always say for the golden shot, if we do miss the hole in one, we need to have as worst the red ring. If we do get outside the red ring, then we haven't been making that good adjustment. Basically the same type of wind again, guys. And then we're going to go with 
a little bit more backspin this time 3.1 3.2 still using one bar of side spin to the right but here you can see we're using the position that we do want this is going to miss more to the right because it kind of makes sense for uh, the last time i had a position further back and then he had more uh what can I say more time to to change direction there with the spin so we're coming in pretty nicely but once again you know we're getting too much to the right we need to make sure that we remove the, remove the side spin but as i said worst case scenario we're getting a red ring now which is a solid result in the end three kingmakers and the kingmakers is what we're looking for here we do want to stock up there so we can grind uh, in tour play so in tailwind here i'm using four bars of backspin when i do have a hit uh, when i do have a tailwind crosswind type of win when we do have a win coming left to right we do need a little bit of side spin to the left to compensate i noticed that when i played this all that when we have the win this type of way the ball is naturally going to get a push to the right if we're not using any side spin if we do then play uh, when it comes to the other direction then the ball is going to be needed some uh, side spin to the right to just keep ourselves to the right side so we kind of need to um to compensate for that all the way through 4.5 we do find the position we do have the spin that we're gonna do we're gonna go a little bit more than three and then a little bit of side spin to the left i'm using half a bar of side spin here now to take a look at how the ball is going to be uh, uh, how the ball is going to react 4.5 gives us 2.9 and as you can see even though with a headwind we will not be going in between clubs even with a strong headwind only if we do have an absolute straight headwind having a uh, having around five miles per hour bounce very nicely coming in here we're getting this one very very close needed that side spin as you can see and we can see if we cannot tweak that one to get in the hole very soon getting the red ring uh, and we get some rapier cards we get firefly and then in the end three kingmakers so shot number five and here we do have a straight headwind take a look now with a straight headwind this strong wind if it would be a uh, less than four mile power we would not be going in between clubs now we do go in between clubs and i think it's very important for me to show you this type of shot that this is the risk that we can take but we need to take this risk due to the fact that we do, let's say it like this. If we're going to bounce before the fringe, we're going to have a very inconsistent bounce. We need to make sure that we bounce on the fringe. That's why we use overpower instead of backing up our target. Last but not least, we do have a 4.2, four bars of backspin. And then we're going to add a little bit of side spin to the left, only around half a bar. And then we're going to have the position as we wanted to. 4.2 gives us 2.7 rings and then we're going to take our shot can we end up with a hole in one in another golden shot guide that's the question we bounce nicely there coming in here and we take uh, the right side of the hole getting it in for a hole in one so some tweaks we had to make to get the spin correct here the, the distance was okay, but the side spin was a little bit trickier to get to work. But now when we do have it and we locked it in, then you need to follow the spin adjustments that follow. So we take a look at the spin. We opened up tailwind, max backspin, tailwind and crosswind left to right, four bars backspin and half a bar of side spin to the left. Then we do have tailwind, crosswind left to right, four bars backspin. As, to get, as we do have a natural push to the right, so we don't need the side spin to compensate there. Crosswind left to right, 3.8 bars backspin and one bar side spin to the left. Crosswind right to left, 3.8 bars backspin and half a bar side spin to the right. Headwind and crosswind left to right, 3.5 bars backspin and half a bar of side spin to the left. Headwind and crosswind right to left, three and a half bar backspin, and then headwind three bars backspin and half a bar of side spin to the left. So landing position, this is the spot. Yellow ring resting on the fringe bottom part by the start of the fringe with the ball guideline to the hole. Very easy to replicate, and that's going to bring you a consistency 
in this golden shot last but not least we take a look at the uh, asset here with the all the spin adjustment with the adjustment with the landing position and the rings make sure you either print it out or you have it up on another, on another device when you are playing to help you remember what you are going to do um, on your 30 second seconds that you do have so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching this guide for golden shot medium version make sure that you hit the thumbs up button if you like the guide also make a comment with what you got in your chest hope you get some kingmakers hope you get the apocalypse in your chest as well good luck in the golden shot and thank you so much for watching